A block of mass M slides up the incline shown with an initial speed V0 in the position shown. If the incline is frictionless, determine the maximum height H to which the block will rise in terms of the given quantities and appropriate constants. More interestingly, number two, if the incline is rough with coefficient of sliding friction mu, determine the new maximum height h2 in terms of the given quantities. It never ceases to amaze me how elegant some physics solutions are, and how simple some of these problems can be if you consider conservation of energy. This is why tests like the AP um, more often than not are going to have a long free response problem like this, which deals with conservation of energy and work um, over many other subjects. I think probably the second most common one you'll find is dynamics uh, with forces and stuff. And you could use forces and stuff in acceleration to find this, but that would be a lot longer than what I'm about to do. In question one, Let's consider the basic equation that I go back to, a form of the work energy theorem, which says that the work done by external forces must be equal to the change in total mechanical energy for the system. But in problem one, the incline is frictionless. And friction is one of the only things that can, um, you know, exert work, okay? Work done by external forces means that something has to come in, speed up or slow down the process, take energy out or put energy into the system. And in this situation, we get to zero it out. Because zero is equal to the change in energy, and rather the change of energy is equal to final energy minus initial energy, we have something we usually just assume that EI is equal to EF, but take note, in part two we won't be able to say that because there is friction. So what kind of energy is present in, let's say, the initial position and the final position? You'll note that if we call this the ground level, H equals zero, there's no potential energy where the block begins. But there is motion, there is kinetic energy, so it has because it has that velocity. I may say that the energy in the initial position consists of my initial kinetic energy. And finally, if it reaches its maximum height, then for that moment, it stops going up and starts coming down. It loses all its energy of motion, translates it all into energy of position, energy of height, irrespective of the fact that the path we took to get there is slanted. So Ke is equal to Pe. The definitions we need are one half m v naught squared for the kinetic energy, where the v naught is exactly the v naught they described, and m was given to me as well. And this must be equal to m g h, the definition of potential energy. The maximum height h here is the same one I'll mention there. It's the desired variable. We may cancel out both m's. We may write this as v naught squared over two is equal to gh, and we get the classic result, very, very common in introductory physics, v naught squared over two g is equal to h in the situation where we have the frictionless surface. But over here in problem two, things get a little bit more interesting. Because now the incline is rough with a coefficient of sliding friction mu, and now we want h2, a different height. I would think a lower height, since now friction will impede our ability to travel up given the same initial velocity. We once again go back to the work energy theorem. Work done by external forces is equal to the change in energy. But this time, it's not zero. This time, we use the defi definition of work as the sum of all external forces times the distance or the displacement over which those external forces act. This is equal to EF minus EI. And thinking about all the external forces that are in play here, we find one. Free body diagram says friction for external forces. There's also gravity, the mg sine theta, down the uh, slope, but I'm going to call that an internal force and wrap that up with the energy. 
So my external force is F, and I'm going to say that for FD we have negative curly F for friction D. Now technically work is force times distance times the cosine of theta, theta being the angle between them. So let me, let me throw that down really quick. Work is force times distance cosine of theta. Force in this case is going down the slope, whereas displacement is heading up the slope. The angle between these two vectors is 180 degrees, and the cosine of 180 is negative 1. That's why this turns out to be negative FD. It also works if you consider the fact that the work being done here is such that it should pull energy out of the system. That's another good reason you could think of this as needing to be negative. But anyway, with the final energy, much the same as it was previously, whatever motion we had has been turned into potential energy, so MGH for that. And with the initial energy, all we had was that motion, so 1 half m v naught squared. So that h is going to be the h2 that we are hunting for there specifically. So we're making progress, but one thing I need to do is make sure that my governing equation, which I'm going to solve for the desired variable, only talks about given variables. And right now, the force of friction and the displacement up the slope isn't exactly a given variable. We have our force of friction, which we have learned operates downwards, but we also have our displacement, okay, which is this slanted thing going on here. So we got to come up with substitutions for both of those. I will remind you that the force of friction, by definition, is equal to the coefficient of friction times Fn, the normal force. The coefficient is fine, we know that, but what about the normal force? Consider the normal force to be the force of the surface, in this case slanted, operating at that angle, and consider how that must be in equilibrium with the inward to the slope force, commonly known as mg cosine theta. Okay, it's probably just a good idea to know that that's how the trigonometry works out. Into the slope is mg cos theta, down the slope is mg sine theta, that's because straight to the ground is mg. But anyway, these two forces make up the sum of forces in my slanted y-axis. So I say that the net force in the y-axis is equal to fn minus mg cosine theta, assigning the upward direction to be positive. The sum of forces is equal to zero because they are in equilibrium. And that's where we get the common result for all slanted surfaces that the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. Of course, the normal force is not equal to the weight in this situation. Now, let's deal with the displacement, okay? The displacement through which the force of friction acts. Now, I've already started to draw this triangle. That doesn't give away what I'm about to do. Remember, this thing, this vertical height here is what I'm looking for, h2. We have the displacement up the hypotenuse of that triangle, and of course we have angle theta. We set up the true statement that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, specific to this problem, h2 over d. We multiply both sides by d to yield d sine theta is equal to h2, and we divide both sides by sine theta to isolate the displacement as h2 over sine theta. All of that so we can replace the force of friction with mu fn and the d with h2 sine theta. So here's what that looks like. We have negative. Okay, in for force of friction goes mu and then the normal force mg cosine theta. In for the displacement goes h2 over sine theta and then we continue. That's equal to mg h2 minus 1 half m v naught squared. So some things we can do here is we can cancel out all the m's. They appear in each piece on both sides of the equation. 
We can rewrite this with a simplification. I'm seeing here a cosine over sine. Now sine over cosine is equal to tangent, so cosine over sine should be equal to cotangent. So one form of this equation could be negative mu g cotangent of theta h2 equals gh2 minus uh, v squared over 2, let's say. All right, we got it. Everything mentioned here is given to us in the problem. So we can now solve for the desired variable h2. First, we're going to have to get all of the h2 pieces over to one side. I'll do that by subtracting gh2 from both sides, and I'll yield this. Negative mu g cotangent theta h2 minus gh2 is equal to negative v naught squared over 2. Let's get some room here. I can see now that everything I have there is negative. So in my next rewrite, I'm going to remove all these minus signs, effectively multiplying the equation by negative 1. And also while I'm here, I'm going to factor out the common factors. Uh, two common factors, actually, might as well. I have h2 in both of these terms, and I also have g. So what that looks like is this. I pull out h2g. I leave mu uh, cotangent theta, and because I pulled out both of these things, I get a 1 for the remaining term, and that's equal to v naught squared over 2. And now, finally, I can divide both sides of this equation by everything that is not h2, and that would be g, and then this thing. So I get v naught squared over, let's say 2g for the 2 that's already there, and the g that's coming with us, and parentheses mu cotangent theta plus 1. The surprisingly complex solution to the height attained when a slanted, uh, slanted path of displacement has friction. Definitely not as easy as this, right? But the same basic blueprint. We began both of these problems with the work energy theorem, and believe me, that's a lot easier than using forces and kinematics to find the same height.